claims today that aborted fetuses may be able to feel pain have been seized on by the anti-abortion lobby to reopen the whole debate about termination of pregnancies. The claims are based on a report in today's Lancet. It describes research which found that fetuses as young as 23 weeks showed signs of high stress levels during blood transfusions and it suggests they should be anaesthetized before abortions. But do the findings really prove that fetuses feel pain in the same way as fully developed human beings? This little girl was born a healthy 7 pounds 11 ounces at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London this afternoon. Her parents haven't yet decided what to call her, but already her mother's natural instinct is to protect her from pain. Yet until the findings of research on babies in 1987, research similar to that now completed on fetuses, the accepted medical view was that newborns didn't suffer pain as we know it. The new research on fetuses was carried out in the labs at Queen Charlotte's Hospital in London. It measured hormonal stress responses of fetuses between 23 and 40 weeks during blood transfusion operations on their livers. A comparison was made with responses to the same operation on the umbilical cord, which has no nerves. The report doesn't come to the clear-cut conclusion that a fetus suffers pain. It does find a clear fetal reaction to medical treatment. There's a surge in hormonal substances connected with stress. It also concludes that doctors should give pain relief to fetuses. It's very important as the first step we take the research further to see if we can block these responses with anaesthetic or pain-killing drugs, giving them to the baby. I mean, if you look at what happens in medical practice in relation to newborn babies, five or ten years ago, the newborn was not felt capable of experiencing pain. And then it was shown that newborns mounted a significant stress hormone response to operations or needles, and that this could be blocked by drugs. We've really just shown the first thing in the baby inside the womb. And what we really need to do now is to take it further and do the second thing, seeing whether drugs can block these responses. But just as a fish registers a response when it's hooked, which isn't necessarily pain, so a fetus registering a response isn't necessarily experiencing what a grown person would know as pain. The arguments about consciousness of pain are far from simple. We're talking about a, a chemical, a hormonal response. We're not necessarily talking about a pain reaction from the fetus. But a lot of the um, comments on it have been trying to link that and saying that fetuses therefore feel pain during abortion, and we shouldn't draw that link. The chilling, silent scream on the face of this child. This video, made by anti-abortion campaigners in the mid-80s, exploited to the full people's fears about the suffering of fetuses. Today's report has added to their stock of ammunition. Anti-abortionists will use the new evidence to demand changes in the law relating to abortion. The Abortion Act passed in 1967 legalized abortion under certain criteria. In 1990, the Human Fertilization and Embryology Act gave some ground to the anti-abortionists, introducing an upper time limit of 24 weeks instead of 28. Now the anti-abortion lobby will use this latest data to campaign for a further reduction in the upper time limit. Pro-life campaigners have been making huge advances in the last few years. There has been a significant turnaround of opinion in this country. For instance, Dutch-style euthanasia laws will not be enacted here as a result of decisions in Parliament. Recently, we've decided to outlaw the use of aborted babies when scientists wanted to plunder their ovaries for their eggs. And here again, I think now that people will be aware of the pain inflicted on the pre-born, there will undoubtedly be political pressure to provide greater protection for the rights of the unborn. But while anti-abortion campaigners are delighted with the new data, it's not clear how far it ought to affect abortion practices, because terminations at 23 weeks are rare. The vast majority of abortions take place before 12 weeks, with only 0.4% at over 24 weeks. The findings, though, do go on and raise a number of other implications. One you mentioned in terms of the abortion debate. The other, of course, is in, in relation to the birth process. We all accept that mothers experience pain, indeed sometimes quite profound pain, during the birth process, and we put a lot of effort into providing them with pain relief if they want it. It may well be that the baby experiences quite a degree of pain. Today's report leaves some uncertainty. The next stage of research should look at whether local anaesthetic reduces stress levels in fetuses. That might make it clearer whether or not fetuses can benefit from pain relief, and so give a better indication of whether they suffer pain in the first place. 
Well, I'm joined now by Professor Wendy Savage of the Royal London Hospital and by Catherine Francoise, the Education and Research Officer for the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. Professor Savage, how far does this research show, or at least strongly indicate, that fetuses do feel pain? I think it's interesting research, but I think it's a long way to go to say that because there are an increase in hormones that a fetus is feeling pain in the same way as a child or an adult. We know that there is reflex activity, um, that uh, if you prick somebody who's had a brain injury that they will move their leg. That doesn't mean to say that that is necessarily perceived as pain because that perception has been lost by that person. But aren't these, uh, these natural, these ho stress hormones, aren't they part of uh, the ordinary body's natural reaction to pain? They are part of that, but they're also, there are things like stretching and infusing things into the fetus may well cause a ri rise of hormones. But I think it's a red herring, really. I mean, just like Geoffrey Archer's book, um, this is a red herring because when a, a fetus is being aborted at 23 weeks, it goes through labour. Now, I see Professor Fisk said that um, uh, babies might be at risk of suffering pain through normal labour. I mean, most babies, when they're born, they have a little cry and then they go to sleep. That is not the reaction of somebody who's been through 12 hours of excruciating pain. So I think we've got to have a bit of common sense here. Yeah. And I, I think that it doesn't. Your sort of introduction to this suggested that this was going to make a, or um, certainly David Alton suggested, it was going to make a huge difference to uh, the question of abortion. I think. Yet again, he's barking well, on the wrong tree. Let, let me go to Catherine Francois. First of all, what's your interpretation of this research? This research merely confirms 40, 50 years of previous research findings mm -hmm. showing that the unborn child has a similar response to you or I, or indeed to any other mammal. Uh, what is significant about this response is that it's not simply measuring the physical reaction to painful stimuli that we've always known about, but it is rec re um, recognizing the, the hormonal level, the endorphins and, and such like. And there is no scientific criteria for measuring pain in an adult or a child. You know, I stick a pin in you or, or me, we would both feel pain and we wouldn't know what level. Science. But, but as, as Professor Savage says, it doesn't necessarily mean that well, there is a sense of pain in the way that you or I would understand it. But, well, an, it is only as recent as 1987 that we accepted that the newborn child could feel pain. Prior to that, they used to do surgery on the newborn child without anaesthetic, um, on the understanding it couldn't feel pain. Now, the burden of proof where there is a question of doubt is surely on those who are saying there is no pain because otherwise this denies the right of protection to any human being who is unable to completely communicate their feelings. Professor Savage, um, what about that point? Wait, Doesn't the burden of proof on you to, to, uh, to prove, to, to safeguard the child, to, to, or the unborn child, to give it the benefit of the doubt? When um, we do abortions in this country, women are usually anaesthetised. What Professor Fisk is talking about is if they're doing intrauterine procedures, which up until now they have done in a conscious woman who hasn't had any anaesthetic, that perhaps they should give her some light anaesthetic so that the fetus is not stressed. What in, in a, can I just come yeah. in? In a, in a late abortion procedure, the woman would not necessarily be anaesthetized. In fact, her abdomen may be injected with lethal substances that will poison the baby. This is all the more harrowing. I mean, it's harrowing enough for the woman who is conscious going through a labor and feeling the baby struggle within her. We are equally concerned about these research findings on women as well. We've always been concerned about how abortion what, affects what women about as also, well as men. Sorry to interrupt as, you. As what children. about the point that until very recently people didn't think the newborn babies can feel pain, whereas now it is accepted that they can? Well, I think that those of us who are old enough to remember doing circumcisions mm -hmm. in the uh, uh, labor ward knew that babies felt pain. You know, we used to give them this sugar lump with brandy on it to suck whilst we were doing the circumcision. And, I, I mean, I think that it's very interesting to see these responses yeah. in the fetus 
but I don't think that's got much to do with what Catherine was saying there. Well, let, just let me go to Catherine. Are you going to use this, uh, this research as a launching pad to reopen the whole campaign to change the abortion law again? We continue our campaign, and we've always based our campaign on scientific and medical facts. Oh, We're nonsense, not talking Catherine. about this isn't a, a to do with morality or religion. You, you've this is about. We've based your campaign. We've based our on campaign emotion. on medicine and science, and we welcome particularly right. evidence that comes from outside of our own movement I'm for both the baby and the mother. I'm afraid we will have to leave it there. Thank you both very much. Indeed. Thank you.